Hello and welcome to the Loan Officer Wealth Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Johnstone, and I have an incredible offer for you today. What we've done is we've taken the 10 most profitable methods to grow your mortgage business that we have learned from interviewing the producers on this podcast, many of whom are doing over $100 million in volume per year, and we've packaged them together into a condensed 45-minute training where you get to learn the 10 most successful and profitable activities that you should be running in your mortgage business. Then we show you how to automate those processes with people and systems so that they run and continue to produce loan applications and new partners that want to send you business pre-booked into your calendar without you having to do any cold calls or chasing or really any work. It's a blueprint for you to be able to produce more in your business while actually working less. And you can go get that training today for free at chriswebinar.com. That's chriswebinar.com. So make sure you head over there today, grab that training for free and make sure that you watch it because the sooner you get started on implementing these strategies, the sooner you can see results and continue to grow your mortgage business. Thank you again for being here with us for this episode and enjoy another one on the Loan Officer Wealth Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Loan Officer Wealth Podcast. We are here with Tony Taylor. Tony, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. No, oh, thanks, Chris. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Awesome. So um, I'm so excited to chat with you because you've got such incredible knowledge for us in the mortgage industry. So, um, well, first off, if you would give us a little bit of background about yourself, tell us a little bit about your business and where you're at right now. Okay, so um, I'm down in South Florida. I actually have a mortgage broker business licensed in five other states, um, Florida, Indiana, Wisconsin, South Carolina, and Virginia. That probably makes no sense why I picked those geographic <laughs> spots, but I promise you there's a reason to it. <laughs> um, and just um, been in the business. This is actually, I've been in the business since I was 19 years old. And wow. so since 1990 um, is when I started in the business right before I turned 20. And uh, yeah, so I've been around for a day or two. And um, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it's another, we're in another season of this industry, another cycle that we're going through right now. Um, interesting times out there. I, I think that all over the country, it's, it's funny because I think people talk about this boom that's been happening being, they think it's geographically isolated. Yeah. And it's not, you know, I talk to people in the Midwest. I, I grew up in Michigan. Um, I talk to people back home and I'm from a very rural area. They're experiencing, you know, it's different. It has a different flavor, but it's very similar to all kinds of areas. And, you know, I talk to people all over the country and the story is very similar no matter where we're at geographically. Oh, absolutely. It's been, it, and it's not even just, you know, North American based, you know, the property values around the world are, yeah. are escalating and, uh, and turning down a little bit, which is absolutely fantastic. I yeah. mean, depending on how you look at it. But now we're on the we're on the other side of that and helping to guide loan officers through continuing to grow and continuing to thrive in a changing marketplace. So um, what is your advice right now for how are you shifting your business? How are you approaching the new market? Yeah, so a couple things. Um, you know, one, I think it's an opportunity to remind ourselves that we should always be good stewards of our profit and loss. Our yes. P&L. Um, you know, and it's funny, I went through one of my credit card statements the other day and I was like, oh, look at that. I pay for that and I don't even use it. Right. So I did, did some cleaning up there and, you know, stop being frivolous in spaces like that. Um, as far as getting new business in the door, we are being um, very intentional about making sure that we are really touching people. Um, you know, from physically phone calling people to getting, trying to get as many face to faces with people to handwritten note cards, to, um, emailing just kind of every modality that we can to make sure that people know that, Hey, we know you're out there and man, we would love to be able to service you or people that, you know, for your mortgage needs. And I think now more than ever, you know, it's always a numbers game. Yep. Right. It just depends on the market environment as to how, what the numbers look like. <laughs> so we're going to have to talk and love on more people in order to do the same amount of business. And that's what we're focused on. That's what I have my team focused on is making sure that you're not forgetting anybody. Yep. Um, I was you know, and you know, look, we're all humans. We get busy doing our businesses and, and stuff. And I had um, last year an event that I had a guest list and I said, you know, it's funny. I went through that guest list and not everybody was in my CRM. You know, I'm like, wow. okay. 
they came they came to the party but i'm not you know and and shame on me right so i i really took that pause back and even the contacts in our phones yep right getting making sure that and, and sometimes there are people that we haven't seen or talked to in a really long time most of the people that i talked to that fit that description they were just we were just happy to catch up yeah and in the meantime i had the opportunity to let them know that i, I need them to keep me in mind so it's, um, I had a, a guy last week that I've known for, I don't know, probably 15 years. And back in uh, the late 2000s, I actually invested money in a private company that they own. Oh, wow. And I wasn't calling on them either. And I'm like, wow. well, what the heck? You know, I literally wrote a check to them to support their business. And, um, you know, I got the annual report in and I was like, it hit the inbox and I'm like, oh, Tony, oh my gosh, how are you not calling on these guys? And so I reached out to him had a conversation, had a great conversation. Yep. And, um, you know, so it was interesting. And, and what's, what's interesting too, Chris, is that when I called Jim up, he, his first reaction was, you must be killing it. Hmm. And I said, we're doing okay, but I'm not killing it. So it's interesting how the public perception is to so your friends, your peers, your family, they may think one thing, but that's not the reality of what people are experiencing right now. Yep. And so it's an opportunity to, to just make it, you know, like, hey, look, whether I'm killing it or not, I still want you to refer the people that you know that need mortgage services to me. That's right. And that's one thing that I get from database marketing all of the time is like, oh, I didn't know that you wanted my referrals. And it's just asking for the business and making yeah. a habit. And the other thing to touch to your point of being and having the discipline to follow up with your past clients and do it on a consistent basis. And I love that getting into your phone. Like there's so many contacts that we're just leaving completely unnurtured. Uh, you know, we're horrible farmers uh, we typically are. in the mortgage business, but just four calls a year can dramatically impact the overall number of referrals that you get from your database just by asking for that. So that's fantastic yeah. advice. I think too, the other piece that you just touched on is, is just really making sure you're intentional and very direct. I think that people hmm. go through and they think, well, they know I do mortgages, so they know. And they just assume, and, and this could be somebody that's in their life socially, and it could also even be a business affiliate, right? They just think, well, I had lunch with them. Of course they know I want their referrals. You yeah. cannot leave anything to assumption. And I think whether you're a real estate agent or a mortgage person, every one of us have experienced the conversation with somebody that we're fairly close to that said, well, I didn't know you did refinances. I thought you only did purchases or, or vice versa. And, how, and, and shame on us. Yeah. Right. Shame on us for not being a better communicator about making it clear. And I love you and I want to be able to help you. Yep. So, um, yeah, I think that you've got to be super direct, leave nothing to assumption and you can't, you can't be passive about it. Oh, a hundred percent. And so that's the database and warm network and what's in your phone. What <clears throat> other phone calls are you making right now? Where are you digging into to continue to grow even though the market is changing? Well, ironically, um, one of the things I'm digging into is simplicity. Hmm. So I, you know, you know, I'm part of the marketing animals, the freedom club, mm -hmm. and I've been part of that for seven years and it's been amazing. I don't even know what my life and business would look like without it. But one of the things that I have been guilty of is over technology okay. too much. And so, you know, what I really started to listen to in the last year where there's some really heavy producers that I have so much respect for, you know, Tammy Saul is one of them who's just, if you're familiar with her, you know, oh, she's yeah. killing it up in Maryland. She didn't even have a CRM. <laughs> and I started to, you know, I had some conversations with some other people um, and I'm going to feel like a jerk because I can't remember their names. And again, just people that are really running amazing businesses. But the thing that I took away from all of them is that they were ba staying very simplified. Yeah. And so that's the other piece that I'm looking at is I'm going into my business and I'm, I'm looking and saying, okay, how can I simplify this? Not only for my team, but for my customers and my business partners Yep. and trying to, you know, take off the rough edges where things aren't as simple as, as I think the public wants it to be, as well as for my own organization. Yep. You know, if you look at, um, you know, the, the, the don't, don't hate me for bringing up their name, but rocket, right. What, but what did rocket do? They gave the consumer the idea that it's easy, that you can push a button. Yeah. doesn't mean it's true. <laughs> okay. But that's the perception, 
right? So I'm looking, when I look at those simplifications, I'm saying, okay, well, what in my business is creating friction for anybody, whether it's yeah. my customer, whether it's my referral partner, or whether it's my own team? And how can I reduce or eliminate that friction? Because if I can make this easier for everybody involved, our capacity increases, our efficiency increases, and, and most, you know, one of the most important things is the consumer and the partner experience increases, which is going to perpetuate more business. Yep, absolutely, 100%. So we just went through something very similar at Connection Incorporated. So we make phone calls for loan officers and we book appointments. So we'll call your past customer database, we'll call your realtors and that sort of thing. And so we had um, concierge agents that would make all three of those calls. They would call referral partners, they would call past customers, and then they would also call like lawyers and financial planners to set those appointments up. And what I did was I said, they're, they're spending, depending on what client they're working on, they could be making like nine different types of phone calls in any given day. Mm -hmm. So we took the concierge agent and we just said, okay, you know what, you're a database specialist, you're going to be the realtor specialist, and you're going to be, and, and just giving them the clarity of I make the same calls every day, uh, I mean, we went from on average booking three appointments a day with realtors to now each concierge agent books six appointments a day with realtors just by the clarity and the focus of the activity. We didn't change the script at all. It's just giving that person that focus in the job that they're doing. So that's very powerful stuff. That's awesome. And I love because here's the thing that you guys are doing too, right? That that people that are out there in the trench with a different function in this industry, they say, I'm going to go call my people but they don't even have the list compiled. Yeah. So they roll up in the morning and they're like, I'm going to make calls. But I don't know who I'm calling. And then, you know, an email pops in or a text message shows up or whatever. Right. It's, we're, we're notorious for creative aversion. Oh yeah. Um, and the next thing you know, we're off on a tangent and we've completely forgot what we even started the day with our intentions completely falls apart. You know, tomorrow's a new day, but you got to really have a plan and then just execute. Yeah. Absolutely. And so when you look at that planning and, and, and you look at your mortgage business, where are you finding that if we look at it from a simplicity standpoint, what's the 20% of the things that you do that present 80% of the opportunities? These calls are huge. I think the car calls and the, um, the mailers, you know, so we do aside from phone calling our, our database four times a year, we drop a physical piece in the mail four times a year. Hmm. And so, you know, they're just, and, and we literally, the people that make my calls, they start at A and they go to Z and then they start all over again at A yeah. again. Um, and then the mailers, we do them literally about every four months, three to four months, we're dropping those out. And I think those two are the things that increase our visibility. And, and you know, so, but still I have people on my team that are in sales. I'm like, you've got to get the people into the system. If you get the people into the system, then I have these other components that will help you. Yeah but you got to get them into the system. So it's really, you know, don't, and it, look, there's, um, I don't know if you've seen this or not, but I think Scotty Hudspeth shared it with us originally. It's an app that's called uh, C-O-V-V-E. It's free. Oh, okay. Go onto your phone and you go into this app and it literally will email you a list of every contact in your phone. No way. Yes. Comes in a CVS format. Now, look, I, you know, I'm, I've been around for a minute. You've been around for a minute. Um, I had over 10,000 in Whoa. my phone. Okay. Now a lot of duplication and fairness. Okay. But the truth is, is that we all have a lot of people in our phone. So the minute mm -hmm. that, you know, somebody says to me, I don't know who to call, <laughs> I'm like download the app. Yeah. You're not going to clean it up. You're going to start calling. And in the process of calling, you can do some cleanup if you want to, yep. but that's where we're going to start. And it's people are, I mean, I had a, a friend of mine, I had over 20,000. And, um, you know, again, I'm sure there's some duplication in there, but I don't care how much, I mean, even, even if it was, if everybody was in there twice, it's still 5,000 people. Yep. So how can you not make some traction and, and impact by calling the, and, you know, again, my team, what we've done is we've got, all right, when we have an address, we are sending them a card. If I don't have a phone number, because that is the case sometimes I'm a little, I'm, you know, I'm a girl. So you you know, I'm, I can be a detective <laughs> like, all, all those years of my twenties paid off, right? Like I can find you. Um, so I use various tools, whether it's a County record, whether it's other tools that I have, but you know, I will find your address and I'm dropping handwritten note cards out. Yeah. 
you know, hey, I don't, you know, I had, I had a guy that I worked with back in, he was actually my first boss in the wholesale business back in 1997. I'm friends with him on Facebook. I haven't, I don't have a phone number for him. I have no idea. I know where he lives, like city wise. I found his address on the property appraiser's website and I went in and dropped him a handwritten note card. Yeah. You know, you are always very nice to me at this job. You know, would love to find a way for us to work together. By the way, he's in wealth management. So he's even in a space, but you know, it took this market for me to go, I need to make sure that everybody in my life knows and to start taking those steps. Yep. And you know, it's the funny thing because it's these small little nuances and making it a habit, making it a routine and going out and doing the things. Yeah. Even when we were at the height of the refinance boom, and I would get on the phone with a top producer talking about products or services, their business was still 80% purchase and 20% refi, super healthy. And they're the ones that are still just super smooth. Business is still growing because right. it's the disciplines now of exactly what you're talking about that lead to that long-term success. Because even in the middle of a refinance boom, they're still following the plan. They're still keeping touch with everybody. They're still making the text messages, making the phone calls, dropping the mail. It's these fundamentals that, you know, when you're in the mortgage industry five years from now, it, today installing these things are the difference between having a tremendous business and just having the business that you've got now that's just a little bit different. Right now, 100%. And, and look, you know, when, they put, when you put them in, it's not like you just drop one handwritten card or make one phone call. They go in the system, so now they're part of the system. That's so right. that's just the first of a series of events. And I just look at it, you know, you said we're not good farmers. Well, you gotta, what do you got to do to get a crop? You got to plant seeds. That's right. right. So all these little things are just seeds being planted around. And, and I think that, you know, I had a girl that I worked with for many years. Her daughter graduated from high school. I remember when her little girl was born. Hmm. And, you know, so I sent her a direct message on Facebook, looked her up on the county records and sent her a card and congratulated her. And, you know, it's look and, and I'm happy to reconnect. I mean, you know, over the course of these years, I've met a lot of people that were really important to me and were big parts of my life at some time. But seasons take us away from each other. Yeah. And I'm happy to just reconnect with them. Right. So it's kind of like this win win. Maybe it'll bear fruit. Maybe it won't. But at least somebody that was important and that we had this you know, synergy at one time, it's an opportunity for us to refresh and reconnect with too. Absolutely. And you never know where a conversation or a relationship will go. And it's, uh, you know, people are good. You know, yeah. Be good to people and it pays off. Yeah, no, agreed. So I'm very interested in the direct mail piece. And I think some of our, our listeners may be as well. So you're dropping them into a system. Now, do you have somebody in your office that's responsible for sending the direct mail out? Do you use a third party service? What does that look like? Yeah, so we, I actually have a girl in my office and she's responsible for managing the variable data, keeping the list up to date, scrubbing it when we get return emails and think mail and things like that. And then she uses the local Sir Speedy printer and they, they do the whole deal. They'll actually, depending on how we do it, most of the time we do some type of a card in an envelope. Um, we actually stick to the size that looks like a thank you card or an invitation because we feel like people just, you know, are going to be more apt to open it. Always a first class stamp. Now, this particular cycle that we're doing, we're actually going to go with a postcard. Um, okay. That's the first time I'm doing that. It's a little more cost effective. Um, we'll see whether or not, you know, time will tell. Right. But I'm yeah. like, OK, well, how can I be out there, get something to them? But at the same time, again, going back to that profit and loss and making sure that we're being a good steward. So I'm like, all right, let's let's try the postcard this time and yeah. um, see. And, you know, like I think I think it will be different because the truth is some people are just going to throw it. They're going to flip it. They're going to go with oh, a marketing piece. and They're going to flip it in the mail. Um, but it's done with handwritten type of font. Yep. So it looks like it's a personal message, right? And, um, you know, we, we do send a different message to business partners as well as our clients. So the, the call to action is different for both of them. Um, and But we do send it to both of them. I don't just send it to the people I've written mortgages for. I send it to everybody that's in that system that I have, you know, aspire to do business with or I've done business with, as well as the actual consumers. That's amazing. So your realtors are in there, financial planners, yes. lawyers, everybody's getting cards. Yes. 
And so that's funny because I, you know, I follow a lot of direct mail stuff and, uh, you know, I'm a Dan Kennedy student and all of those wonderful things. And I have heard that oftentimes your postcard will uh, pull the same, if not a better response, because they don't have to actually go through the physical activity of opening the envelope to get the message. Okay. Okay. So you I love hearing that because it was a lot less expensive. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, look, I mean, what that enables me to do, right? I've got states that I'm in that I have lists of people that I would love to market to. Mm -hmm. And, but I'm, I'm like, okay, well, if I just drop something and they've never heard of me or, you know, so like familiarity, I think brings some additional value to the power of what you're sending out. But I love hearing that. That's fantastic to know that. Yeah. And so it, with your direct mail, when you send it, is it is it measurable enough where you're able to go back and be like, we sent this mailer and we got these phone calls or we got this response and it's like consistent every single time you send the mail? No, I wish it was. Okay. That, that'd be the only piece, the measurability of that to be able to. What I can tell you is that I will run into people that will tell me, I get your pieces. Thank you so much. They're, you know, whatever. I, I get a lot of feedback. I actually, this last time that we dropped out, I had two different realtors that I've never worked with before that said, yeah, we would love to work with you. No. Literally sent me an email and said, we'd like to, and I was like, I had to do, I had to take, I'm like, did we send that to the agents? <laughs> like, what did they get? Um, yeah. So, so that's, you know, there had been, but, but I can't tell you that it results in a direct, because a lot of it, Chris, is not, it's not, hey, I want a mortgage. A lot of it's, hey, we just appreciate you. Yeah. We want you to know that we're thinking about you. We hope you're the best. There is always a call to action. Please keep us in mind. But there, it's, it's really our way of saying we didn't forget about you. And just because we closed a loan or, or maybe we didn't even close the loan, that's another difference. Because I'll talk to people that do the database and they only send it to the people that they closed a transaction with. We don't limit it to that. If you think about this and you know with your business, right, you're calling, you've done leads, you do the lead follow up, you do so many different things to stay in front of people. Sometimes people cool off and then come back alive. Yep. So if they came into my system and I have an address, they get a, a physical piece yeah. because we know and the same reason they stay in the CRM as long as they don't unsubscribe. The same, you know, the same reason that they get all the other touch, they get the database calls. It doesn't matter whether we close the loan with them. We're still going to call them. And that has actually perpetuated some of that business coming back alive. And, you know, look, sometimes they just didn't do the last transaction with us, yep. but because we've become a resource for them. And, and we even have, when we call the database, my team is taught when they make that call, if they say, I already, you know, like maybe it's a zombie lead, you know, Hey, I already bought the home. Oh my God, congratulations. We don't just hang up the phone. We say, okay, we want to make sure a couple things. Number one, did you get your homestead taken care of? Hmm. Number two, you know, we continue to offer them an extension because we want them to be in a good position in life. Yes. And we also know if we do those things that karma comes back. Yep. Right. So um, it, it's just it's a way for us to offer an extension, whether we gave them the transaction or not. We've had plenty of people that didn't do their loan with us, but have referred us clients. Yep. So staying in that visibility is part of that. Yeah, that's huge. And, you know, speaking about referrals, like even just calling your pre-approved and lookings, like there are going to be pre-approvals that you've got out there that just don't end up moving into a house in the marketplace. But yeah. when they're in that cycle, man, they are referral machines. They're talking to everybody about yeah. real estate. That's a phenomenal opportunity that I see so many loan officers missing. And you've just taken it to the whole other level by keeping them on the database and keeping them in that flow. I mean, nobody is doing that. That's yeah. such a powerful tip that you've just given us. That's like, if they don't close the loan with you, still market to them. A hundred percent. Simplicity, but genius and will absolutely bring more business in the door. Yeah. I remember, um, again, I think, you know, Scotty, again, I think one day had said, you know, I call people. He goes, I'm telling you right now, you could call people that you never met. You didn't do the loan with, and you could present as if you were their loan professional and they don't remember. Yeah, that's so true. So they, you know, and it's funny. I don't, I don't think he's completely wrong about that. I think, you know, is it going to happen every time? Maybe not, but I think it's going to happen more often than it's not. Yep. So you've got to really find a way to make sure that you stand out in a unique space for your people. And, you know, there's nothing better than going to a local event and running it and you're like, oh, I did that mortgage and that mortgage, <laughs> you know, and going on down the line. And, and Hey, there's a few of you out here that we haven't met yet, but we probably need to spend some time together. So yes. let's talk. <laughs> 
That's amazing. Well, Tony, th- again, thank you for being so generous with your yeah, time and your you. information here today. That is incredibly valuable. Um, if there are people looking to reach out and pretend, you know, loan officers that are looking to work with an incredible yeah. team like yours or something like that, how do people get a hold of you? Oh, gosh, I would love to add some great loan officers to my team. So my office number is 561-373-0371. And my direct email is Tony, T-O-N-I, at interconnectmortgage.com. So, yeah, I mean, I would love, I'm always looking for good people, good, strong people with good good drive and hunger and um, that want to be able to go out and spend their time selling. We've got the support system in place so that they can stay in that lane and we can cover these other pieces for them. That's beautiful. Well, again, thank you for being on the show. Um, all of those details will be in the show notes below. And uh, and again, Tony, thank you. Now, thank you, Chris. Have a great day. You too. Hey, it's Chris. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope that you enjoyed our guest today on the podcast. This is a reminder that we have just finished taking the greatest lessons from all of our guests and packaging them together into a brief online video presentation that's going to teach you the 10 most profitable ways to grow your mortgage business. And then we show you how to automate those processes in your business with people and systems so that you get the results without you having having to do the work every day. This is quite literally a blueprint so that you walk into your mortgage business every day with pre-booked appointments with borrowers that want to meet with you and referral partners that want to send you business so that you are spending your time inside your mortgage business on the highest dollar per hour activities and you truly become the executive of your business, a true business owner, rather than just somebody who's going to a job every day and making a wage on the way through. This is an absolutely incredibly powerful training for you, and I cannot wait to hear for you to experience it. So head on over to chriswebinar.com. That's chriswebinar.com to get that free training today. Now, if you could do me another favor, If you enjoyed this episode, please head on over to iTunes, search the Loan Officer Wealth Podcast, and give us a five-star rating and review, really on any podcast platform that you're watching this on. That just 30 seconds of your time goes to help another loan officer in the industry discover this information and really help put their life and their business on track for more success. We are all in this together, and there is more than enough for all of us in the industry. So I would love if you left us that five-star rating and review. Don't forget to stay tuned for our next episode, and I'll see you then.